What is up guys? Welcome to JS Racing. My name is Jason and this video is going to be a first in a series of video that is going to be all about this prototype engine that I will be building. Now, if you're talking about like building the highest horsepower as possible uh, or the craziest build, well, this is not going to be about that. If you uh, want to see like some really crazy builds, I have a couple of channels I can recommend to you. Uh, cars and cam uh, cameras and cars or cars and cameras. I mean, I'll link it in the description and the other one's Redbeard's Garage. I mean, these guys are always building crazy builds and I always wish I'd be doing what they're doing. But unfortunately, I don't have the resource to do what they do. So uh, yeah, this, vi uh, this video and this engine that I'm building is not going to be about that. Um, but anyway, so this series is going to contain, at least for this one, uh, this video is going to be uh, about the background of the engine. Then the next one is going to be uh, introduction to the parts that I'll be using, then the actual build. And then after that, it'll be testing and everything else coming along after that. Now, let's get started with the background. So if you're not interested in hearing the story, it's fine that you skip the video, but at least I want to put it out there, uh, the reason why I'm building the engine the way it is. Okay, so we all know that the go-to standard for uh, competitive karting is two-stroke engine. So the, all the highest levels of world championships, Euro championships, whatever, they're all doing like uh, either Rotex, Vortex, um, IAMI, you know, all, all sorts of crazy stuff. So these engines, like if you're talking about, you know, uh, teenagers or adult classes, uh, you're doing about 30 horsepower, something like that. So it's a crazy engine. It's hugely powerful. And locally, it's also the case. So, you know, the highest levels of competitive karting, they're all using the same stuff as everywhere else. But here lies the problem. Now, these engines are expensive, okay? We're talking about $3,000 for just the engine, okay? And then you got to pay for, I don't know, 4000 5000 for the chassis. And that's just the start of it. You know, the, the tires, the, the computer, everything else that comes along with it, the cost just keeps building up. And... The problem with here locally compared to the rest of the world, okay, people can afford this kind of stuff, but because the culture, like the motorsport culture is not as mature as the rest of the world, uh, they don't see the justification in investing that much money into the sport. And we're talking about like these kind of engines, we're talking about really high levels of co competitiveness. Now, with that amount of level of competitiveness, you also need that amount of level of talents, like, a group, large group of talents and also the right instructors to to train these talents up but uh, these are actually quite uh, I think in the stage of infancy at the moment it's a very small pool of people so this really professional group like the elite class people it's like this really small crowd we're talking about less than I don't know 10,000 people even less much less much less and the mechanics the instructors engineers that go along with it even less and on the other hand on the other end of the spectrum, you have this large group of people who really enjoy the sport, but they don't really have anywhere else to advance to once they're past the rental cart level. Okay, so there's this huge crowd who are like into cars, but they're not that good at driving, driving but they're very competitive. So they want to get into higher levels of karting without investing so much money into it. Okay, so two-stroke engine class stuff, it's really out of their league. Now, there is a sort of like a competitive four-stroke uh, class here. Uh, they use the Briggs & Stratton 206. It's an engine that produces about 8.8 .8, uh, horsepower, which is not a lot, okay? Compared to the GX200, the Honda clones, whatever, it's probably just, you know, two extra horsepower. So with someone at my size, this heavy, you're not going to notice a lot of difference. So uh, that's basically the biggest problem with... Uh, the current four-stroke scene, okay? There isn't a lot of options. And the only option is not as exciting as people expect it to be. Now, the other problem with two-stroke engines is that you have to rebuild them every five to six hours. So they're not able to do like endurance races un unless you have multiple carts and multiple engines, but that creates a problem with scrutineering. But anyway, so we find that people actually really enjoy endurance racing. When, when I was uh, operating karting tracks and stuff, uh, where we're in the process of building another one, by the way. But anyway, so uh, we find that people enjoy the thrill of endurance racing because you can have fun with your teammates and also at, at, like at higher levels of competitiveness, uh, endurance racing really uh, is all about strategy and also the endurance of each member of the uh, team because uh, the mechanics, the, the, 
the team manager, all these guys need to stay up like for 24 hours. Like, I mean, we have a 24 hour race locally and people really love that. And they really enjoyed the thrill of, you know, like, you know, in the first half of the race, you're like at the bottom. And then because of some other team not able, not able to follow up with the manpower or anything like that, uh, you know, your team, all of a sudden you're like boosted up to like a third position or whatever. They really enjoy that kind of thrill, you know, because anything can happen during an endurance race. So, uh, with two stroke engines, you can't really do that, but with a four stroke, you can, because, uh, they tend to last longer anyway. So right now the uh, 24 hour race is actually uh, using the Brixton Stratton 206 that I mentioned, and that gets a lot of, uh, participation every year. So people enjoy that, but again, they feel that it's just too slow. You know, it's not really fun. It's not exciting. It's not thrilling because a lot of the two stroke class professionals, uh, they actually go join that 24 hour endurance and they find it's just too easy because, you know, with all the core strength and all the muscles that they've built up to handle the two stroke engine to, to deal with the two stroke, uh, to deal with the four, four stroke engine, it's just too easy. It's a piece of cake. You know, there's not much endurance required. So, this is where we want to place our engine. So it's basically an engine that can, uh, it's a reliable engine, it lasts a long time, and also it's more powerful than the existing options. And it's also bridging the gap between rental cars and the, uh, you know, the Briggs and Stratton 206 to the two-stroke engines, like the entry-level two-stroke, maybe like the Yamaha KT100, but the Yamaha KT100 is not a very popular engine over here anyway. So uh, either way, this engine we're trying to build is a bridge you know we're trying to bridge the gap in between so the horsepower level we're trying to aim for for this engine is going to be around 15 to 16 horsepower okay so it's not any of those like crazy horsepower like i don't know 30 horsepower 40 horsepower we're not trying to aim for that okay because we the other purpose of this uh, engine is so that we can uh, have more grassroots people participating in the sport uh, not only just in you know racing and testing, but also in building the engine itself or even just maintaining the engine itself. Because this engine, we're trying to build mostly out of stock parts, only a couple of parts that are uh, a bit different, which has to be sourced uh, individually. But uh, most of the parts, you can get it, you know, uh, straight from online, whatever, and it's really cheap. Like, for example, the, um, the case itself, like the engine casing itself, is only about, I think, uh, it works out to be around sixty dollars uh us dollars and like the the case cover all that the carburetors they're very cheap here you know they're relatively cheap so for you to maintain the engine and keep it running healthy and all that it's it's a very low cost effort okay so it's all about more about learning the mechanical knowledge that goes into it and that hopefully is going to build up the uh technical crowd so you have more people who are uh, able to gain more technical knowledge, you know, you have more engineers, mechanics, uh, and you can have more drivers that are more knowledgeable about the engines itself, because the more people know about it, the more people work on it, the more people uh, get involved, okay, the bigger the crowd would, gr would grow, because they would, you know, tell their friends, look, it's very easy to run this, it's cheap, just have fun, you know, and once you're getting really serious, you can then jump to the two-stroke uh, world. But right now, for this particular engine, it's very uh, easy to get your hands on, it's cheap, and uh, it actually lasts quite a long time. So the two engines right uh, next to me are the fir very first prototypes that we've built. And I wouldn't even say it's like any crazy modifications, uh, but it's really the typical first stage stuff that you'd see in engine building, okay? So these engines, we've accumulated about 30 to 40 hours of runtime without rebuilding. So. I mean, we are very diligent about, you know, checking every part of the engine because we're still in the testing stage. So, you know, the oil changes, the oil quality, uh, all the parts, we take it apart just to check everything. We've learned a lot along the way uh, with testing this engine. And this engine's a very sturdy engine, you know? It, and I can tell you, the, the cost of it to, to build one is probably less than $200, okay? It's very, very cheap. So there's this competitive product in the market that is doing very similar things to us, they're aiming for around the same amount of power. They say that they can reach about 8,000 RPM, 15 horsepower, whatever. But when we did the lap uh, records, we were quicker than them. Not by much, I think by two tenths of a second, but it's still very encouraging to us that we're getting closer 
to what we're trying to achieve. So maybe this engine is closer to four, 14 horsepower or something like that. But uh, yeah, so this is just the first stage of the prototype. We are going to build a second stage that is much closer to what we're aiming for, which is around 16 horsepower. And in the next video, I will be sharing with you guys what are the parts that I will be using that would make this engine different. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope it didn't bore you guys too much. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace, guys.